Hello, my friends, and welcome to Studio Day Heffrey. You clicked on the thing, so you might already know, but hi, I'm Jeff Cavanaugh. You can hear me on 97 One The Freak in DFW from 2 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday on the Speakeasy. You can also find that and every segment we've ever done, wherever you get your podcasts or on the iHeartRadio app. Now, I want to talk about two things today with you. One is I have my prediction that I feel quite strongly about, that I know who the Cowboys head coach is going to be, but keep in mind that I refuse to be held accountable for my predictions. And then I want to talk about something that I think is more relevant that we're not talking about as much for some reason, and that's about Dan Quinn. So let's do those things, okay? I think I've told you guys before, pay attention to the paper. Jerry Jones takes the paper. So sometimes things that are in the paper came from Jerry Jones because he wants to read them. And so yesterday, last evening's article in the Dallas Morning News from David Moore, I think it's important to pay attention to. And it was about, here's your headline, why keeping Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott together may be Cowboys' most viable option. And the details in there is basically that Either today or tomorrow, it's likely that we will hear from Jerry Jones or that Jerry Jones will meet with Mike McCarthy and they will talk about the status of the job and they will talk about the ability of the quarterback to get them further than they've gone and where are we as a franchise and what are we going to do about it. So, when what is in the paper is that the most viable thing going forward is probably Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott, you should prepare yourself that going forward what you're going to get is Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. And I am okay with that. I understand the appeal of going crazy, changing everything. Uh, I understand the appeal of Jim Harbaugh as a head coach. He's won everywhere. He also got out of San Francisco because he hated anybody trying to meddle with the personnel and what he's doing, so... Imagine Jim Harbaugh is the Cowboys coach when anyone else wants to draft a player or whatever. That'd be fun. Um, I'm okay with it. And I totally understand not being optimistic about it. You have enough evidence at this point that if to convince or try to talk someone into the idea that the Dallas Cowboys led by Dak and coached by fill in the blank are going to perform are going to perform well in the postseason or get off to a good start in postseason games if that's far fre- far geez learn to talk brother if that's far fetched to you and it's just because you've been watching it's a hard thing in the NFL and what you're looking at is what gives me the best chance at being competitive and the Cowboys regardless of the fact that if you see the 49ers in the postseason or if you see the Packers in the postseason, that things don't go well, they're competitive. Boy, they're unique in their ability to fail once they get to the playoffs, but they're competitive every year. And if you say you want a new head coach, all right, we'll go from Kellen working with Dak to McCarthy working with Dak to somebody else working with Dak. That don't sound great. And if you want to get rid of the quarterback, I'm not here to fight you. I've lost the will. I've lost the interest. But understand that if you're moving it, if you're moving on from a top eight quarterback in the NFL, that your next one's not going to play as well. And that's weird to do, especially when the owner's about to be 82 years old. Jerry ain't got time for a bad time. So expect Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. What'll be interesting is the most likely thing to happen is still what was most likely to happen before they played that game, which is that McCarthy will coach this year and Dak will sign an extension. Because if you're going to have McCarthy and you're going to have Dak, you want to compete. And competing with him counting $60 million against the cap is a lot harder than him counting 
25 or 30 against the cap by signing an extension and playing around with your salary cap. And so just be mad, just be ready to be mad if you don't like that. I think rebuilds are fun. I think tanking is fun. I love the draft. Ah, I love all of these things. But they're not ready to just say we're done competing. Jerry's going to be 82. And it's a weird thing to do. Just be like, yep, this team has to rebuild. When you win 12 games every year, you have a top eight quarterback. You have one of the best receivers in football, and you have one of the best pass rushers in football. That's a weird thing to try to rebuild. Because I've heard some from some people. I've heard some wild thing. What can I get for CD? What can I get for Micah? Trade Dak. Like you do realize that the point of a rebuild is to find players like that, right? And you already have them. So then getting rid of them and then hoping you can find someone that's almost as good as them. It's a really weird strategy. Anyway, that, I don't even know how I got here. The major intent of today's conversation is I wanted to ask you guys about the other coach. Dan Quinn, Cowboys defensive coordinator. For all of his years now, on the whole, most of the ways that you would measure defense is Dan Quinn has had good results as the Cowboys' defensive coordinator. Two years ago, it was a foregone conclusion that Dan Quinn was going to get a head coaching job and be out of here. And I predicted that he would be here and he would not have a head coaching job. This year, a week ago, it felt more likely that Dan Quinn was going to get a head coaching job and be out of here. Seattle would be a prime spot for him. The relationships are there. The history is there. It would be a prime spot for Dan Quinn. But let me ask you about Dan Quinn. What I asked you about Mike McCarthy yesterday. If I told you he's going to be the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys next year, how do you feel? Can Jerry sell you on that? Can Mike McCarthy sell you on that? Can Dan Quinn sell you on that? Can I sell you on that? Because he is actually the one. Well, I guess they all fall in the same category for me. I'm fine with whatever. Do I think that Dan Quinn is a good defensive coordinator? I think so. Do I think that the way their defense performed the last half of the year does not scream good defensive coordinator? Yeah, I think that too. And so like everything else in sports, there's context, there's nuance, and there's a lot that goes into everything. I would be happy, I would be excited for a new defensive coordinator next year and not having the same guy. And if, let's say, Mike Vrabel gets the Seattle job, suddenly I think your odds of Dan Quinn being back could go way, way up. Continuity. And I think, like, I like... Dan Quinn. That's the other thing that goes in the sports world is there's also this thing where it's like there are people that personally you like and it's it's harder to be critical and mean if you really like somebody. Like I think Dan Quinn seems like an incredible dude, leader. Dudes love playing for him. I think there's a lot of good stuff about Dan Quinn. I also think that the Cowboys defense being good is very reliant on things like Deron Bland having five pick sixes. Because it just depends how you measure defense, right? Same thing, you can do this with players. Deron Bland and Trayvon Diggs are both great examples. They make huge plays. And they give them up too. And it's like, okay, so what do I prefer? Probably a mix of those things. You never know, and the big plays don't happen real often. So like what I want, and the players and the coordinators is the guys that I'm the most confident that on every play, he does a good job. That's what I want. And I think that this Cowboys defense was very feast or famine, and that for three years, they've been a good defense or a great defense because of the number of times that they have turned teams over. And that number dialed back a little bit this year, but it still worked out because five of them from Deron Bland were touchdowns but the number of times you saw, just take the whole second half of the season. Was that a good pass defense? Nope. Was it a good run defense? Nope. 
Were they good at tackling and preventing yards after the catch? Nope. They're reliant on the occasional and unpredictable big play. I don't like that. I don't like that. And for added context, I do think they're a little hamstrung. But you did it to yourself. Teams prepare their roster for to survive injuries and to be able to compete regardless of those things. So I don't want it to be too big of an excuse, just an acknowledgement. I said it yesterday if you watched. Dan Quinn wants his defense to be long and fast and be able to rush the passer. Yes, those things are true. That doesn't mean that he wants to be playing four safeties and three corners when the other team has three tight ends on the field. That's the players they were left with because that's the way they prepared themselves. They didn't have enough linebackers. They didn't have enough. I guess technically you could have enough stout defensive linemen to put more of them on the field. And now I'm going to get comments about it, but Micah Parsons could, should play a linebacker and we're just going to leave that one. Cause obviously like I watched Micah Parsons drop when they rushed five and not really know what he was supposed to do while he was back there. And none of the other guys got to the quarterback. The idea that one of the best rushers on the planet should be doing something else is silly to me, but we're not going to do that today. Today's video is just a, if Dan Quinn is back, how do you feel? I don't love it. I don't hate it. And maybe that's the secret. Maybe I just gave you the entire secret to Cowboys fandom. Just don't worry about it. Just watch the circus. Find you another team. Get you a little 1B. Get another team that you enjoy watching. I expect Mike McCarthy and Dak back. I'm trying to decide if I'm comfortable saying I expect Dan Quinn back. It was a foregone conclusion that he was going to get a head coaching gig. I don't think that's a foregone conclusion. And if he doesn't get one, he'll be here. How does that make you feel? It's a therapy sesh with me. Anywho, that's what I got for you today. Oh, I do have one more thing. I encourage you. I thought about how to handle this one. Uh, Des Bryant made me cry yesterday. And so I encourage you to go find the interview he did with Ryan Clark. Let me make sure I get everybody that's in there. It's Ryan Clark, Channing Crowder, and Fred Taylor. The Pivot is the name of the show. And they did an interview with Des Bryant. It's like an hour and a half longer than that, something like that. But I would just go to 51 minutes because as a mental health man, hearing somebody talk about breaking cycles and whatnot, I think it's just so freaking powerful and badass and changes the world for everyone in your family that is born after you. And so Des Bryant is a GD hero. And I don't want to like play the audio or video on here because I don't want to monetize their awesome work. So I would encourage you to go to the pivot. I know they tweet z it out a link to just the part I'm talking about, but the whole interview is great. Um, Shout out to Des Bryant for being an MF and hero. And remember, you have no idea what anyone's going through, so be cool to everyone. I love you. Be easy.